Hello, I am Gary Brantner of Rent Art Studios Comics, and this is the show where I talk about the comics I've read, the comics I've backed, where you can back them or get them, and all that fun stuff. So, first off I have to tell you about is a comic called Shapes. Let me see, find my notes. Alright. So, I've read Shapes 5 and 6. I got these at my local comic shop in Ogden, uh, Gamers Asylum. If you live in Ogden or are around that area, I recommend checking them out. They're very good at holding your stuff for you and uh, ordering what you want, just through a text. So, Shapes 5 and 6 is uh, the story about a kid named Trip, and he saves the world by playing a video game, but he also gets stuck in this video game and he can travel in and out of the video game world all sorts of cool stuff like that uh, it is art by Jason Brubaker one of my favorites he's the artist of Sithra that I backed on Kickstarter a long long time ago um, let's see here so Shapes is by created by Rick Reckendahl and written by Jason Brubaker co-written by Rick Reckendahl and art by Jason Brubaker. It has colors by Adrian Amar... Alright, Adrian Amartelivio Amartifio Okay. Lettered by Simon Oh my gosh. Lettered by Simon Boland and edited by Shereri Fallart Fallardi Fallardi Okay, anyway, sorry about that. I'm really bad with pronunciations and uh, if you have any recommendations on how to pronounce your names, please hit me up. Let me know. Um, okay, so Trip saves the world and resets everything and gets his dad back in this story. Uh, pretty cool stuff. Very cool art, like I was saying. I, I really like uh, Brubaker's style of... Uh, you, it's just very sketchy and very... Uh, has a good flow to it. Let's see here. Find some cool stuff. This is published by uh, Cave Picture Publishing, Publishings. And uh, I'm not too familiar with them other than that I've been getting shapes from them for the last... this year and yeah cool stuff um, I really like this art because it makes me think uh, it, it makes me think I should draw simpler because it, it's really cool really stylistic and it, it just gets the point across in the story and uh, a lot of times I put too much detail too much time into my books and obviously it's not working out for me because it takes too long but uh, yeah, I've always liked Jason Brubaker's style. Uh, I've been reading him since uh, Sithra came out. I think I backed him since Sithra 2, but I can't be too sure about that. I'd have to go back in my records. Whatever. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, I should be getting Phobos from Jason Brubaker soon. Uh, I backed it on Indiegogo, and then it showed up on Kickstarter. So. Yep, that's where I'm at right now with that one. Cool stuff. Uh, I really enjoyed reading Shapes. I think it might be over. Yeah, I think it only went to issue 6. And it, it does say right here on the last page, the end for now. So, who knows if Shapes will be back or not. Um, he does have a lot of projects in the works, so you never know where that stands on that. Um, Next up that I've read is a book called Paper Girls 2. This is volume 2. Um, this is written by... Check out that cover. I like how uh, the colors are very simplistic. That. Um, it is written by Brian K. Vaughn. Art by Cliff Chang colored by Matt Wilson and lettered by Jared K. Fletcher. So this story 
Wow, that's a really cool page. This story uh, just gets better with every single volume I read. I'm really loving it. A lot of time travel stuff going on. It started in the 80s, and I think now we are in the 90s in this story. And uh, it just, I like the sketchiness to the art. All this time travel stuff is awesome, and it just, it just keeps getting cooler with every volume. Uh, now you're you're dealing with cloning and uh, doppelgangers, stuff like that. So anytime cloning is involved, uh, I love I love cloning stories myself. Um, so they they had me at that even before I even knew there was cloning in it. I've been a fan of the story so. I even hear, uh, I, I saw on Twitter that they were asking for a casting call for girls around these ages and ethnic, and it's, uh, races? Why can't I think of that word? Anyway, uh, so they, they are making a show of Paper Girls soon, and uh, I'm pretty sure people are going to be like, oh, it's just like, um, it's just like Stranger Things and stuff like that, but it, it's kind of funny how that happens. People accused uh, the Incredibles of being like Fantastic Four, so you know how some people are. They just don't do their research before they say stuff. Anyway, so check out Paper Girls. Uh, I have the next volume in my read pile, but I'm not going to be getting to it soon because I have a lot of stuff in my read pile. Um, yeah, so check out Paper Girls Volume 2. Really loved it. I really loved the coloring. The artwork, um, again, like I said with shapes, I don't know why I put so much effort into my drawing because uh, it just takes me so long. Um, when, I mean, this looks like top notch. I like, I could not do that myself. Uh, it's just insane how cool this looks. So, uh, yeah, I, I recommend checking out Paper Girls. Um, I, I'm a big fan of reading things in the trade, so I'm glad I got this. Uh, my uh, my local comic shop picked this one up for me, so I got a couple paper girls in my read pile coming up, thanks to my uh, local comic shop, Gamers Asylum. Um, yeah, I heard my daughters found a store in Logan, and I I went to that excited that there's going to be a, a comic shop in Logan. And it turned out to be just a gaming store, so... Oh well, but for now, my local comic shop, Gamers Asylum, it is a two-hour drive from where I live, so... Whatever, it works. Uh, during this pandemic and all that, it makes it a little tougher to get there, though, so I do wish there was one closer, especially where I go to Logan every week to donate plasma, so it'd be awesome if I could go to a comic shop there. There is a comic shop in Logan, but I will not mention their name because they are con artists. They rip you off every chance you get. And who wants to go to a comic shop that rips you off? Nobody. Anyway, on to Mailbox. What was in my mailbox this week? Renton Art Studios Mailbox. So, I got an awesome book in the mailbox this week. Um, it is called Broken Bear. Broken Bear... Uh, is one I, if you have been following along, I did a review of the uh, digital version, and right after reading it, I'm like, man, I gotta get me the hard copy. So I contacted, let's see, one of the artists, I think it was a Frankie White. Yeah, I th I'm pretty sure I contacted Frankie, and I said, um, hey man, uh, where could I get this? And he sent me a link to his Amazon store. And so I picked this one up, Broken Bear, straight from his sort, his uh, own site thing in Amazon. And it, it's awesome. It'll be going in my read pile, even though I'd already read it. But it'll be so spaced between, because my read pile is like this big. But that by the time I get to it, it might even be a good month or two or who knows, half a year by the time I read it, so that'll be fun. That's kind of how it's going with uh, White Ash, because I'm getting that. And what else came from my mailbox is Oblivion Volume 1. Um, I, I recently did the uh, review for the issue Oblivion 1, 
and I thought, man, this is really cool, so I went on there to get issue two, discovered that there is a whole volume, and so I purchased the volume, because I love the trades. And, uh, oh yeah, I forgot to mention too, another thing about Broken Bear, it is slightly bigger, you can see that it's got a little extra bleed on it, than uh, the standard comic, so that's cool. It's a different size. Oblivion, uh, it was pretty cool. Uh, it's an alien invasion thing, I think. I'm not sure. When I read it, I'll find out, but I'm pretty sure it's an alien invasion story. Anyway, you may notice Oblivion is spelled with an 18, and I think that has to do with uh, something happens and everybody who's over 18 disappeared in a big purple flash of light. And so, <clears throat> I think the story is going to deal with what we get left with, all the 18 and under kids. So, that's a fun world. And, uh, at least I'm 43, so, well, I'm not 43 yet, but very soon. Uh, so, I wouldn't have to deal with the world of 18-year-olds myself. Anyway, Oblivion, I got this from Scout Comics. See that? Scout. Scout's what it's all about. That's not my song. That's uh, from a podcast that does Scout Comics reviews and talks about Scout Comics. Anyway, Scout Comics is awesome. If you do get a chance to check out that podcast, check out Two Scout Geeks on uh, Stitcher, iTunes, whatever. And But yeah, Scout Comics, this is a Scout comic. I love Scout Comics. A lot of things I read, I'm going to start getting. Uh, I was going to order... It Eats What Feeds It, because that's really popular right now, getting talked about a lot. But uh, I decided, nah, I'll wait for the the trade. I'll pick that one up. Uh, I got a Scout, or a Eats What Feeds It ash can. Really loved it, but it was only four pages. But man, good art, nice little tease. So as soon as that trade comes out, I'm going to be ordering that. Uh, hopefully I will find out about that through the cool channels of Scout and all that fun stuff. Anyway, let's move on to what is in the Kickstarters this week. So, it is Kickstarter time. These are the comics that I have backed on Kickstarter that I find it interesting and maybe saved it because I want to back it, but I don't have the money. But I could still tell you about it even if I'm not backing it. All that fun stuff. So, now I'm going to tell you about the Scout comics, or the Kickstarter comics. Kickstarter comics that I have to bring to you today are Murky Waters. It is a 56-page anthology of uh, all these different creators come together to uh, tell you stories about some sci-fi, some scariness, some horror, uh, ghosts, all sorts of fun stuff. A lot of different stuff. I'm really interested in that one. Um, I don't know if I have the money. It's uh, over the seas, so and I'm a hardcover or hard copy kind of guy. So I'd prefer to get the hard copy, but shipping might kill me right now. I don't know why shipping is going nuts. But uh, it's really it's really putting a hamper on how many things I want to back. Anyway, Murky Waters, 56 page anthology on Kickstarter right now until December 9th. Check that one out. A lot of creators in that. If you look at the list of creators, and see the stuff that they're posting on their Twitters and all that fun stuff, you will be like, dang, man, I want to back that one too. So, yeah, we'll see. Uh, if if money situation changes for me, I'm probably going to back that one for sure. Another one that I have backed is Hack Slash the Omnibus. As you know, I just read the uh, Image Comics version of that, and... Uh, Wish I could have waited, but I am backing it and getting the pin set of Hack Slash because I'm a big fan of the pins, and so it, there's a four set pin set on there. Hack Slash is awesome. If it's Friday the 13th right now, so if you're a fan of Friday the 13th, um, the horror movies, Freddy, Jason, Michael, Chucky, Chucky's even in the book. So uh, the reason why I keep pointing right here is I've actually got the book right here. So this is Hack Slash, the version I've got. But you can get your own on the Kickstarter right now until November 25th. So check that one out. Tim Seeley, he's an awesome guy. He does some cool stuff. A lot of funny stories. If you're if you're a horror fan or a comedy fan, they're kind of mixed together. A lot of good stuff. 
Cassie Hack is uh, is hell bent on ridding the world of all these slashers that come back from the dead and kill kids. So it's really cool stuff. And another one that it's on Kickstarter right now till November 25th is La Fay number four. La Fay's awesome. It, it's about Morgan Le Fay, the uh, sorceress that uh, Merlin stripped of her wings and uh, put her to sleep for a hundred years. She gets woken up by a coven and they put her to work as a private detective. So if you like Jessica Jones, imagine if Jessica Jones was a fairy, had lots of powers and stuff, and she has to work for these people solving crimes and being a detective, all that fun stuff. That's exactly what you'd get if you back Le Fay. So, and there's four issues out. There's plenty to read. If you back it, you get all four issues. If you're new to the series, get all four issues. Check it out. It's really good. The art is awesome. It is adult themed, so kids beware. And uh, it's good stuff. The Encoded. The Encoded is awesome. It's a minority report. Purge plus man versus machine kind of story, and who doesn't like man versus machine stories? The Matrix, the Terminator, all that fun stuff, even Transformers. And uh, so I back that one. There's even a cool pin involved. I've got the pin coming, and uh, it takes place in 2055, a world where there's machines and robots, all these fun things uh, aiding us and. Uh, stuff, but we're worried about AI taking over, so we shut off the machines every year, kind of like the Purge, and we have to go without electronics and all that. And uh, so yeah, it's, I can't wait to see what that one's about. The Tart issues 1 through 12 is on Kickstarter right now. The Tart by Kevin Joseph is, uh, I've got the trade in my reading pile, can't wait to read that one. I read the first issue good stuff and I started to hold at my local comic shop then I found out there was a trade so I got the trade instead and uh, yeah it's in my read pile can't wait to read it the art looks awesome the art changes with every different timeline that Tart goes to so it's gonna be cool that way I can't wait to read that one you will hear all about it when I do and the catch the catch one through three is on Kickstarter right now the catch is a kind of a bank robbery kind of uh, thief escapes from being hunted all that fun stuff uh, it looked pretty cool so I I'm interested in that one. Oh, the crossing the crossing is one that it is about a a train conductor engineer um, one night there's a girl out on the tracks he runs through her and her ghost has been haunting him ever since and so he has been dealing with that. He finds a group of people that are also haunted by ghosts and he starts going to that little meeting of uh, other people that are haunted. And as you find out, she didn't stumble onto those tracks to commit suicide. Something made her go out onto those tracks and uh, so they're investigating that. So The Crossing is in its fifth issue. If you back it right now, you can get all five, I'm sure. It is from Enrica Jet. Enrique Jang and Red Stylo Studios so check that one out it's an awesome one it's got great art it's got a great story it is so cool uh, that is on there on Kickstarter till November December 9th December 9th Crossing 5 Operation Eclipse number 2 looks really cool a lot of cool art um, yeah I, I'm suddenly blanking on what it was about but it looked really cool. Check that one out. It's on there until November 25th. So please check that one out. It's only got a week to go. Operation Eclipse, number two, on Kickstarter. And Urban Animal, volume one, is on Kickstarter till November 18th. That is really soon, with it being the 13th today. So you have five days to get in on that one. Go check that one out. Urban Animal is about shapeshifters. It's a webtoon cartoon that uh, they're they're publishing now through Kickstarter. So check it out. Get in on that one. And that's all the Kickstarters I have for today. And yeah, as you may know, uh, I am a little biased. I I really don't 
understand Indiegogo very well, so I, I rarely back any of those because I, I just don't come across them very often. Um, their site is confusing to me. I've even made my own Indiegogo campaigns before. Not not very uh, user friendly, so I just figured whatever. If people post it on Twitter and I see it, then I'll check it out and back it. Whatever. Um, anyway, that enough rambling about that. That brings me to uh, if you have anything on Indiegogo or Kickstarter, uh, hit me up. Tell me, say, hey, dude, I'd love it if you talked about this on your show. And yeah, I'll write it down. I'll talk about it and give you a shout out on my show. I might even back it. That would be the coolest, too, because if I back it, then I'm going to read it and then I'm going to talk about it. But you know how it is. Uh, I can't back everything, but I'd love to. If I had the money, I would. But I am very open to talking about your Kickstarters, your Indiegogos. Hit me up, message me, tweet me out even. That way everybody sees it and I can share it. If you say, hey Gary, check out my Kickstarter and uh, tag me in that and then I'll be like, oh hey, this looks cool. Go to Kickstarter and check it out. And I'll also retweet you, so cool beans. Um, yeah, let me know about anything you are running. Any Kickstarters, any Indiegogos you're running right now. Even if it's not about comics, but I don't know. If it's a watch or something, I I don't really wear watches. But I'll check it out. Uh, somebody did hit me up once and said, hey, check out my keyboards I'm making. But my computers come with keyboards, so uh, um, I don't know. Anyway, tell me about anything you're working on. Even if it's not on Kickstarter, if it's on a website or whatever, uh, let me uh, know about it. I'll talk about it. And so I'll talk about some shows that I watched recently. I just finished up uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. Season 7. Really good stuff. A lot of time travel in that one. Robots and space adventures. All sorts of cool stuff. Uh, S.H.I.E.L.D. was a very good show, and I'm going to miss it. I, I think this is the last season. So... Season 7 of S.H.I.E.L.D., it was awesome. Uh, I might go back through and watch it again, but then again, I'm thinking of uh, going back through Smallville again. Uh, because I'm starting to get to that point where I don't remember every episode, so maybe I'll go back through and watch those. Who knows? Um, and uh, check out uh, the podcasts. Let's see, what's the last one I've listened to? Um... Make It and Then Tell Everybody is the last pod podcast I was just listening to. Check that one out. It's uh, Dan Barry, and he talks to creators. And I like his slogan, Make It, Then Tell Everybody. Because, uh, yeah, a lot of people are talking about things they're going to do. Just get it done and then talk about it. That's my philosophy. And, uh, yeah, that's it for now. If you have a thing you want me to check out, a podcast, Kickstarter, whatever, let me know. Um, okay, so S.H.I.E.L.D., talked about that. Oh, another cool thing. So, uh, and I probably should have talked about this last episode, but every month I tally up where I'm at, and uh, I just thought it was cool that I, I have sold my 778th copy of Peter Pan, the Vampire Comics. It's issues 1, 2, and 3, and so, yeah. 778 of these monsters are out there being read, being thrown around, being burned, being thrown away. Who knows what they're doing with them? I don't care. If you do read one of my comics, uh, oh yeah, check that out. My daughter drew my pages. And so that was really fun. So she's part of the publishing here at Peter Pan. Anyway, if you have a copy of Peter Pan the Vampire and you want to say something about it, let me know, and because uh, I, I really don't ever hear about anybody reading my comics, and it'd be nice to hear. So, yep, 778 copies of that are out there, um, but unfortunately I am at a negative 296 as how much money I've made off of it. I, of course, you know, I'm counting, anytime I buy supplies, uh, printing the comics for one, tabling at a Comic-Con, and my laptop, my Photoshop, all that stuff goes into uh, expenses that have created Peter Pan the Vampire. So I, 
I do consider it kind of lucky. It's not bad being at a negative 296 considering that it has sent me to my own local Comic Con, Salt Lake Comic Con Fan X. And uh, yeah, in, I'm even counting the hotel expenses and the parking lot expenses, all that fun stuff. So I feel very fortunate that uh, I'm making this thing that that a few people out there are interested in. And so, yeah, if you want to uh, buy your own copies of Peter Pan the Vampire, where'd you go? I I have them on. You can go find you can find them. They're printed by Kablam Printing, by the way. Let's see here. Find issues two, and three. Well, I can't find all the issues right here. But anyway, I have three issues out there. Um, they are for free download. If you want to just buy it, download it to your phone for free, do that. That'd be awesome. It's my birthday soon, uh, if you didn't know. And uh, yeah, it'd be an awesome birthday present to wake up to a bunch of re reviews of Peter Pan the Vampire. Um, so check out Peter Pan the Vampire. I even have each issue in color and in black and white. Let's see here. Gosh dang it. So what I do is, uh, yeah, Peter Pan the Vampire in color and in black and white. All that cool stuff. Um, so if you want to save some money, you can buy the black and white versions. They're cool enough. Or you can download the free ones. Please check out my comic and uh, let me know what you think. That'd be awesome. Um, ooh, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't have talked about myself. I feel dumb now. Um, so I'm going to leave it at that. Please tell me about your Kickstarters. I really, really love when people message me and say, hey, check out my Kickstarter. And uh, I'm going to leave it at that. Aloha, oi.